On the morning of January 1st, a hospital nursery has three boys and some girls. That night, a woman gives birth to a child and the child is placed in the nursery. On the 2nd of January, a statistician conducts a survey and selects the child at random from the nursery. This includes the newborn from the night before, and every child already present from the morning of January 1st. The child that is picked randomly turns out to be a boy. What is the probability that the child born on January 1st was a boy? Now, rephrasing this question, what is the probabli probability that a child born on January 1st was a boy given the new information? The new in information meaning that the child randomly selected the next day on the January 2nd turned out to be a boy. Now, rephrasing this in math more mathematical terms, it is a probability that a boy was born given that a boy was picked on January the second. Now, this is a classic implementation of Bayes' theorem, which on the right, so the probability of event A given event B is equals to the probability of event A multiplied by some scaling coefficient, this fraction, which is just the probability of event B given A normalized by the probability of event B. Now, Expanding on this, we get the following. So what the question is trying to sort of, um, test us on is how would our priors change given this new, piece of this new piece of information? Now our priors here meaning what would our prior estimate of the probability of the child being born being a boy was? Now, our prior in this case would just be the probability of getting a boy for, for, for any birth, right? So you can either get a boy or a girl. Therefore, the prior is essentially the probability of a boy being born, which is the same as the probability of a girl being born, which is just half, right? Because there's only two outcomes and they are both equally likely. So, how would this change our posterior? How would this new information change our posterior? How would this new information, the fact that a child picked randomly the next day turned out to be a boy? Now, without diving into the numbers, a boy being picked implies that a boy was most likely to have been picked. And this would imply a boy majority because the event that occurred is likely the one that had the highest outcome of a, the, 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 the highest probability of occurring. Therefore, it implies at least a major at least a more than 50% chance of there being a boy majority. So we should expect our posterior, this conditional probability, the probability of a boy being born given that a boy was picked, to be at least 50%. Because a newborn boy would be a contributing factor to creating this boy majority, which would allow a boy to be picked, right? because that's, that would be the most likely outcome if it was a boy majority. Hence, when calculating this value later in the question, we should expect to see this change being reflected in the posterior. So from the prior to the posterior, we would expect to see a boy majority. So expanding on the conditional um, probability, this is this, this Bayes' theorem, what we get is we have the probability of a boy being born, the posterior being 0 0.5, we obtain from prior, and now we have this fraction. So uh, the, at the numerator, we have the probability of a boy being picked, given that a boy is born, and on the denominator, we have the probability of a boy being picked in general. So let's focus on the denominator, the probability of, of a boy being picked. Now, this is just a sum of the probabilities of picking a boy, right? So what are the ways that we can pick a boy? It can be a boy is born and then a boy is picked the next day or a girl is born and then a boy is picked the next day, right? Both are, uh, both are events where a boy is being picked on the next day, regardless of who is being born. So it will be the sum of these two probabilities, which would be the probability of the event that is represented by the Number of outcomes of a boy being born intersected with the boy being picked the next day, and similarly for the girl being born intersected with a boy being picked the next day. Now, expanding on this further, using the laws of, to 
of conditional probability, we have the following. Now let's look at the two terms we have here. So now we once again have two conditional probabilities appearing. On the first term, we have the probability of a boy being picked given that a boy is born. And on the second term, we have the probability of a boy being picked given that a girl is born. So let's look at these two terms closer. And just filling in the prior that we already know, which is the probability of a boy being born, which is 0 0.5, which is equal to the, the probability of a girl being born as the prior. Now, what are these two conditional probabilities? So let's start with the condition of what if a boy was born? So what if a boy was born? So if a boy was born, the probability that we can pick a boy, it will be as a fraction, the total number of boys, so 3 plus 1, because one boy was born. And then the denominator would be 3 plus 1, the number of boys, plus g, number of girls. Because remember, we don't know the number of girls here, right? This is an undo. And don't worry, we'll wash out in the answer eventually. So this results equals to 4 over g plus 4. And similarly, the probability that a girl was picked, just for completeness, the probability that a girl was picked given that a boy was born is equals to the number of girls is an unknown g divided by 3 plus 1, the number of boys, because a boy was born to an existing 3 boys already, so 3 plus 1, plus the number of girls. So g over 3 plus 1 plus g, which is equals to g over 3 plus 4. Now let's look at the other condition, the other conditioning event. What if a girl was born? Similarly, running through the calculations, we will get the following. The probability that a boy was picked, given that a girl is born, is equal to the number of boys, 3, right? No, no, no extra boy was born, 3, divided by 3 plus 1, because we know a girl was born, so it's 3 boys plus 1 girl, plus the existing unknown number of girls, g. And that equals to 3 over g plus 4. Once again, for completeness, the probability that a girl was picked, given that a girl was born, is equal to the unknown number of girls, g plus the new girl, g plus 1. That divided by 3, the number of boys, plus the new girl, plus 1, plus the unknown number of girls, g. And that equals to g plus 1 over g plus 4. And now let's just fill in the blanks. So the first number on the left, probability of a boy being picked given that the boy was born times 0 0.5. That would be 4 over g plus 4 times half, and the right term will be probability of a boy being picked given that a girl was born. So this bottom right, it will be 3 over g plus 4 times half. Running through the calculation, we get the following. 3 and a half, 3.5 over g plus 4. Now don't worry, the g will wash out in the end. So plugging in the values that we have in our scaling coefficient of the Bayes theorem. So on the numerator, the probability that a boy is picked given that a boy is born, we've calculated that from the bottom left over here. So we feel that in 4 over g plus 4, normalize or divided by the probability that a boy is picked. So that would be 3.5 over g plus 4. And then that multiplied by the prior, which is just the probability of a boy being born 0 0.5. Running through the calculations, the 0 0.5 cancels out. And finally, we get the following, 0 0.5714, approximately 57.14. Congratulations, you've answered the question. You're a genius. But what have we noticed here? We see that as the prior, the prior is 0 0.5, right? Because before any new information, there's an equal chance a boy and a girl is born. Now, our posterior is 57.14. So it is slightly more than 50%. Why? Because given that a boy was born, it hints at a boy majority. So it will be at least, the, 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 the number of boys should at least be equal or more, right? That would, that would mean that would support the outcome of a boy being picked randomly, right? Because the, the, the outcome that happens is the most likely outcome. Hence, we will expect the probability of uh, picking a boy to be at least 
and with this new information, we can see that our prior has now been updated to be just above 50%, 57.14. And that is the intuition behind the, base, uh, the, the, the application of Bayes' theorem here. Now, depending on the, the way the question is set up, sometimes this increase between prior to posterior could be larger, could be a lot smaller. And if you want to see a question where the increase from prior to posterior is a large jump from you know, like 1% to 50%, please refer to the playlist on the left for more quant interview questions about Bayes' theorem. And if you'd like to hear more about my, in, my recent interview experience applying for quant roles in London, please refer to the playlist on the right. And if you want to learn more about quant alpha models and how they fit into a quant trading system, the various types, please refer to the video on the top. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.